What up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Content Sessions. I'm here with Jason Christo. What's going on, guys? Uh, the plant-based king. Plant <laughs> Jake Christo, the plant-based king. That. <laughs> that's all right. No, that doesn't even matter, man. That's okay. Yeah, this is part of it. Uh, Jason, yeah. Um, yeah. personal trainer. Yeah. Coach. Yep. Makes food. Make great food. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, you know, I mean, so for me, I played sports my whole life, right? So I um, played semi-professional hockey. I played football, uh, soccer, anything you can name, maybe besides curling, I've done it, right? And so for me, I mean, getting into fitness is just, uh, it was just like a natural progression, you could say, from all the sports that I played in the past, right? And I mean, now for me, it's like there's a way for me to kind of carry, I guess, you know, all the exercise and the fitness I did before and now give that on to other people and transfer that on. And all the benefits that I saw for myself in terms of my body, in terms of how I felt, I can now give that to other people and help them out, right? So I guess that's where my progression led from, I guess, just, just being an athlete and doing fitness and then going in and helping other people, right? I mean, I also did like, uh, competed a little bit, did physique competitions, for example. Um, physique is when you get to wear the shorts and stuff like that, so you don't walk around in the speedos and stuff like that. But you still got to get greased up. You know, you can't avoid getting greased up. So still put the oil on you, you get greased up, you walk out on stage. But for me, it was really too much about myself. Like, you're always looking in the mirror saying, hey, is my tricep popping out enough? Is my bicep popping out enough? And I wanted to make it more about how I can help other people and how I can bring a little bit more value to other people rather than being kind of narcissistic in a way and constantly looking at myself, right? And so that's where the natural tri uh, progression was too in terms of helping other people uh, hit their fitness goals as well you cool. know yeah um, I see on your Instagram a lot you've got uh, you, you do a lot of featuring of your clients and yeah your people showing their progress showing exactly their stuff which it, I guess is by design yeah exactly you know you, you definitely want to keep people motivated and show them that you know this is something that's possible and I think a lot of people when they see um, you know that it is possible for someone else it makes it in their head that it's possible for them right I mean people I talk a lot of, to my people about Roger Bannister he ran uh, you know four miles in under a minute right back in the day and a lot of people you know up until that point didn't think that they could there's like there's, there's no way I'm gonna be able to run four miles and he did in the Olympics and, and broke a record right and since then I mean you got high school kids now that are running four miles in under a minute I mean the point is it's like when people see stuff and they can see that you know this is possible for him but it's also possible for the people that he trained and it's possible for me too and I think that's you know for me that's why I kind of design it in that way to give people that motivation Cool. And then what's the, what's the deal with the food delivery thing? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, being the plant-based king, you know, I'm really about, uh, you know, plant-based nutrition. So that means uh, uh, no meat um, and also uh, no dairy if you want to be vegan. So I, I really cater to the vegans and the vegetarians, you know. Got a lot of backlash from the, from, from the meat community, you know what I mean? Because I've been a meatitarian mm -hmm. for, you know, my entire, for most of my life, you know, right. until I switched over and became uh, plant-based, right? But with the meals, you know, for me, it was just about, I found that a lot of my, 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 my clientele and my customers were having a hard time knowing what to eat, right? And, and so it's like, if I'm spending an hour with you, an hour and a half with you, a lot of stuff that goes on is about 90% is what I don't see. It was what you do when you go home. What sure. are you eating throughout the day? So I just started the, the meal delivery um, company really to help out my clients, right? Like it's not, I don't even make a lot off the meal delivery companies. It's more like I did it because I'm like, I know that I can help people in terms of the nutrition that they're putting in their bodies, right? What did you say? Um, I switched about two and a half years ago, right? I went vegetarian two and a half years ago, and then about five to six months ago, I, I went vegan on it, right? You know what, man? It, that, everyone always asks me if I miss it. You know what? You, everything's good until you go to a barbecue or a Super Bowl party, you know, and then you start seeing the wings on the table, and every now and then, I'm not, I would be lying if I said I, it didn't creep in, and it's like, yo, just, just grab a wing. You know, the, you got the, the two people on the side of your shoulders saying, hey, bro, you're going to be good. Just grab a wing. You could do it. Then you got the angel on the left side being, come on, man. You know, you're doing it for ethical reasons, man. Save the planet, you know? So usually, this guy always wins anyway, so that's good, but, you know, I, I still get cravings every now and then. I mean, I was a, a military in my whole life so switching up and stuff like that every now and then you still get hit with certain stuff you know but I think my foundation and the reason why I'm doing it is pretty deep so I think that's what keeps me grounded and I think it's the same thing with the people that I train if you've got a deep reason why you're doing what you're doing then it makes it easier for you to uh, you know I guess drag it out a little bit longer in terms of what you're doing sure makes sense uh, and so what are you working on now? Yeah, so right now my whole goal is to, I really want to transition what I'm doing to an online platform, right? Uh, right now I, I, I do a lot of in-person training, I run a lot of boot camps and stuff like that, but the way I see the world going is um, a lot of things are happening online. And I mean, when you're online, you, you, you have more freedom, I guess, to, to, to travel, to do what you want to do, but also help more people, right? So you're, you're kind of um, licking two birds with one stone, you know, at the end of the day, right? And for me, it, it really comes down to, of course, you got, you got to help your people um, at the same time. I got to have, you know, be able to have my freedom to do so as well, right? And so my goal is to find ways to, um, you know, 
see where the 21st century is going and find ways to help my clientele while also being free and being online. Yeah. Are you doing training now? On, like virtually? Are you doing like FaceTime? So, doing so right now I do uh, mainly like 90, 98% of what I do is in person and the 2% of what I do is online. And online, for example, is in terms of marketing that might be set up. I don't have any marketing stuff that's set up. Initially when I started, I would market on like Kijiji or I might run an Instagram ad here or there. Didn't really know how to use it, but I just was like, hey, let me throw some money in it and see what happens. Um, at the end of the day, I found like the majority of people I get now is just based off of referrals. So people are just telling people. So I haven't actually ran any ads for my own personal fitness stuff in, in, year, in like a year and a half or anything like that, right? Um, that's where I want to switch things up because being online, is a place where you need to have people see you online for the most part and then come to you. Right now it's just, hey, um, you know, maybe you can't train me because I'm far away. Yeah, here, here's a program, right? But it's not, it's not actually like a, a system. So that if there's no system to it, then it's kind of hard to call it a business because it's like hit or miss. Maybe somebody messaged me, maybe somebody doesn't. Right. So you're trying to package up that, some of that knowledge into a product. Pro a product, exactly. A product and a system that makes sense. Got it. And are you yeah. thinking about doing that in a, in a super customized way? Yeah. So um, the way that I want to do it again is like if you look at like, you know, all the trainers that are out there right now. I mean, a lot of people um, go pretty wide with their stuff. Hey, I'm offering programs. If you need help, do this, do that. I'm like, I've found ways to build muscle on a vegan on a plant-based diet, right? And that's just something, I'm, people look at me sometimes, they're like, you know, what kind of steroids do you take? Are you on juice and stuff like that? Let me just flex real quick for the camera real quick, right? But people are like, what kind of juice are you on? I'm like, honestly, man, like it, if anything, orange juice and water, that's the only thing I take, right? But people think that, you know, I'm pulling up syringes and stuff like that sometimes, right? And it's like, okay, in a way, I take it as a compliment, though, because it's like, okay, if I, if, I got the, if I got some muscle mass on me, but I'm, doing, I'm going against the grain, and I'm the guy that says, hey, you can build muscle eating spinach. You can, you, know, you, you can throw it back to Popeye's. You know, Popeye had it right back in the day. You can build muscle on spinach. You can build muscle uh, you know, eating whole grains. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So my whole thing, just to go back to your question, is, is to switch up and go um, niche-based and show people how to do it on a plant-based diet. Build muscle, burn fat. Got it. And are you going to target people that are just looking for that, or are you, are you open to... So I, what I'll do is I'll have other sections for other people that, that aren't necessarily plant-based, but my specialty and everything that's going to be um, launched through my sales funnel will be to help out that person that's looking to transition to a, to a plant-based diet. Got it. Cool. Yeah. And, and so from the customization angle, um, break it down for me. Is it like, yeah. here's kind of the five categories I'm going to build content for? Is it like I have a one-on-one -on -one with you, understand who you are, and I'll pick which of my content makes the most sense? Yeah. T talk me through I how think you want to do that. Oh, the idea that I had in mind in terms of the marketing stuff was I wanted to, again, you know, I guess knowing kind of who my, my target audience would be kind of helps out. I mean, I know it's somebody who's transitioning from meat to a plant-based diet, uh, somebody who wants to, who lifts weights and is in the gym, but has a misconception about if it's possible, right? So from there, I can go and I have my own, um, you know, photo set up and, and, you know, click the link over here to send them somewhere where they can put their email in and I can give them some free information stuff, you know? Um, you know, from my whole idea is to, you know, really, solidify myself and show them, hey, I do know what I'm talking about, right? And I think it might be hard to do that if I'm just throwing up a program and saying, hey, buy my program, go to my website, and that's it. Of course. Right? Yeah, I yeah. am. Okay. Yeah. And so we were talking a little bit beforehand yeah. about platforms. Yeah. I think ClickFunnels is one that you were Yeah. At. Like, I mean, these days, I feel like there's, uh, you know, a lot of people, even when I talk to a lot of people about, like, you know, hey, this is what I'm looking to do on a sales funnel, a lot of people have no idea what I'm talking about in terms of <laughs> click here, go here, go here. People are like, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, I'll just have people DM me, right? And I'm like, okay, they don't really know, but me doing my research, I know that there's ways to do a funnel, right? And I know, Mike, I mean, you, you know, I know you know your stuff and stuff like that, right? But for me, I did my research and it was like, I looked into uh, click funnels, yeah, and it looks like they have everything where you can literally set it up so you're going from here to here to a sales page, right? Sure. Yeah, I think no matter what you use, I think the idea of a funnel is the right idea for yeah. that product, right? Like, I see a picture or something of you on Instagram. Yeah. I'm not just paying you money to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah. Build, bringing people through the actual sequence of, for sure. here's some free info, yeah. here's a couple of workouts, here's a meal, whatever it is that you're going to give away to yeah. build trust, build right. a bit of credibility, right. and then kind of move them through, I think sense. is the right answer. Okay. Um, I think we can talk a little bit more what does that content look like? What is the best way to do it? Right, we right. talked a little bit about some of the competitors. You sent me some of the competitors, some of the guys yeah. that are doing it in your space. Um, I think one big gap in your space right now, just in that fit, there's a lot of fitness, mm -hmm. multi-level, or even you know, 
get halfway through a workout, pay for the, you know, yeah. pay for the rest. Exactly. Uh, I think what a lot of guys are doing wrong, I think where you could capitalize is, yeah. is finding out where the com competitors stop right. in terms of content. Right. Go five times past that. Makes sense. Okay. Um, the reason why I do show like this and the reason why I do consultations like this is if someone's thinking about hiring you, if someone's curious, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it to you for free. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with the ability to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that builds trust and builds brand. Mm -hmm. And then you win on the fact that people don't feel comfortable doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. They're too lazy. They're not, they, they need to be motivated by something else. Right. Whatever that thing is, right, right. Um, if you've given them everything, right. they'll come back. Makes sense. Way, yeah. way easier than if you say, well, I'm going to give you 10%, but pay me for the other nine. Yeah, Does makes that sense. Make sense. It kind of sounds sleazy, I guess, in that way when people do that. You kind of get, it leaves, kind of, it can leave a bad taste in someone's mouth. It's for sure. Upsetting, you know? And I mean, I think from the real life, if you think about the real life sales funnel of it, right? Yeah. If I was on a website, yeah. if I was on a YouTube and I was watching some workout and I, it was like, here's, you know, workout one of five. Yeah. And I got the first one for free, the second one for free. And it's like, now put in your credit card. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I haven't seen the rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I haven't seen if you know what the fuck you're talking about Good point, first. good point, good right? point. Right, so yeah. I think more content, yeah. like a lot more content. Yeah. It sounds counterintuitive because yeah. if you're giving people everything they need that they don't need you anymore, yeah. it's like, well, where's the, where do I transact? Where do right. I actually get it? But right. I'll tell you from experience that giving away everything mm -hmm. beyond anything that you're even comfortable giving, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to drive brand mm -hmm. people are going to trust you way more when they've done it and mm -hmm. they're like Shh, you know what i tried it for two weeks i fucked it up yeah you're going to be at the top of their mind because they're yeah. like the guy that gave me all the answers is yeah. the guy that can help me get to the finish line that's a good point so yeah. i really think thinking about it like that yeah, that's a good point. so let's talk about what that actually looks like yeah yeah so um it's going to be workout plan it's mm -hmm. going to be meal plan meal plans workout plans um, in terms of the workout plans, uh, it's going to be there's going to be a lot of video demonstration stuff, a lot of video, you know, going back and forth. That there's going to be a hub where my people can go to and look at all that stuff, so they have everything. They sure. Need. And when you say that, do you mean uh, like here's how to do this one exercise, thirty exactly. second video? Here's how to do this one exactly. exercise form. Exactly. 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 Yeah. exactly. And then what what will the plans look like? It'll say yeah. do. X of this and X of this and X of that, exactly. and then they'll have the video sequence to take them through. Exactly, exactly. And they can go and type in, uh, you know, uh, what exercise they're working, for example, and then that'll just show them the video demonstration of how to break it down. Got it, got yeah. it, got it. And so where do you, th thinking about content, I have a couple of ideas for yeah. you, but where do you see this core audience of yours? Are they people that are in an office job or the people that, where are they in your mind? Where do you see them? I mean, that's a good question, man. I mean, sometimes I think, I guess they could, they could literally come from anywhere. Like, I mean, if I look at, you know, I've done some Google trend searches and in terms of people that are vegans, you know, uh, in North America, uh, a lot of people are happen to be in California, uh, Oregon in the U.S. Uh, in, in Canada, there's a lot of people in, in Toronto that are, that are vegans. You know, you got uh, Vegan Dale downtown Toronto. So in terms of, uh, you know, their jobs and stuff like that, I would say, um, you know, it could be people from all walks of life, you know, that just, but still at the same time have a mentality to want to, you know, improve their body, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, improve the planet. So most, I'm assuming that's kind of age range. What's your instinct on that? I would say like anywhere between the ages of um, 19 and you could say 40, 19 and 45. I would say yeah, is, is the age, yeah, 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 that's pretty much where I'd say. If I had to narrow it down, I could narrow it down some more mm -hmm. and just focus more on 18 to 39, for example, or 19 to 39, yep. and I think that would be a good age range as well okay. for people that are looking to, to build muscle and transition. Cool, yeah, so I think one thing to think about, when, especially when you're creating content for ads and content yeah. for the funnel is picking a couple of, of core, like pr actual personas. Okay. So this is Tom. He's 25, he works okay. in an office downtown in the okay. financial district. Like, okay. really like building those out. And I yeah. can send you a template on like how, awesome. to, how to draft that That's out. Awesome. Yeah. But um, one thing you could do is build content around those audiences. That's gonna actually make it easier to guide, okay. guide the path, right? Okay. So if I'm 25 year old Tom who works yeah. in finance, who whatever, yeah. I don't get up from my desk a lot. Okay. Probably eat out down to, at, for lunch a lot, right? Okay. So for me, what I would wanna see is if I'm gonna be stuck in my office 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. What can I do at my desk? True. Okay. Right? Okay. I can get the, the, the chair yeah. dips, yeah. like whatever bullshit, yeah. right? But like right, right, that right. five minute in office workout, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I think you could build out a sequence of those videos on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Completely yeah. free. Yeah. So that guy builds that relationship with you. Yeah. Like, yeah, this guy Jason, he 
got me off my lazy fucking yeah. desk chair and got yeah. me moving. Yeah. Um, and then if you hit them and they happen to be thinking down the path of the, the plant-based thing, then great. Right. I think what you should do is build out content that can be mass, right? Okay. Because there's going to be a finite amount of people that you're catching in a transition that are thinking yeah. plant-based. Yeah. You want to go down that niche. And you yeah. can do it a little bit with Facebook targeting yeah. Yeah. to an extent. Mm -hmm. But I think if you create content that is more universal okay. and then take that five, funnel that 5% out who could actually be your yeah, customers. Yeah. I think that's a better play than creating content that's exclusive okay. to plant-based. Okay, okay. What, do you think that it'd be possible like to, to test like two, um, I guess two marketing strategies? So let's say for example, mm -hmm. I, I have it geared towards, you know, showing some people, running for like a free webinar, for example, mm -hmm. shows them how to build muscle on a plant-based diet. And then so I funnel certain people in, but then I also will do an ad that's a little bit more generalized to maybe helping that somebody out like that and seeing like who's coming around the back end or yeah. something like that. Is that something I could try? I think you should. I think yeah. you should try as much as you can. And see what happens. I think the nice thing with what you do yeah. is you can shoot all of it quickly. Yeah. So yeah. if it's, if you're talking to existing vegans yeah. or if you're talking to meat eaters and trying to transition them, right? But yeah. the content's pretty much the same. Yeah. You could record video camera in your face. Yeah. Hey, meat eaters, are you thinking about going down this path? Or are you annoyed? And then finish that video. True. And then literally just record it again. Or okay. yeah. take, the first take the first clip and replace it with a clip like, hey, vegans, are you trying to figure out how to take this to the next level? True. Yeah. Take that intro, yeah. then yeah. dump it onto the rest of the content. True, true. And just speak to as many different audiences as you want. Good point. Yeah. Hey, hey, people that work in an office, are you tired yeah. of being stuck at your fucking desk? Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah. You could literally shoot I like that, yeah. 20 different yeah, intros for sure. that then latch on to the same content for everybody. Okay. If it's, if it's going to be about yeah. plant-based stuff, okay. I think that can speak universally, but you okay. could shoot the same intros, then use each of those intros mm -hmm. as a, a, a segment on Facebook. So like targeting okay. these people. Okay, I see what you're saying. I'm yeah. targeting people who have this job title. Got you, Or got I'm targeting you. people who... X. Right. Facebook uh, yeah. as a platform is unbelievably flexible right. with right. the amount of targeting you can do. Okay. Um, I don't know what the count, the number of things that you can target, but yeah. it's it's big. Okay. So yeah. um, there's a lot of interest you can hit. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect example I always use. My friend owns a bridal shop, mm -hmm. and she was targeting uh, women between 25 and 35 mm -hmm. who lived in Toronto. Okay. Who you know were in a stylish whatever. Yeah. Um, and that was great because mm -hmm. she makes custom bride dresses and it's, it's beautiful. She mm -hmm. makes beautiful stuff. But we added one layer to the marketing that took it to the next level. Okay. And that was women whose relationship status is engaged to be married. Ah, okay. And it was you. fucking lights out. No way. Game okay, over, that's right? awesome. Yeah, it was okay. easy. So okay. yeah. I do, um, actually, I'll, I'll give you, I have, one, awesome, set of, I have yeah. one set of targeting that will work well because we have a yeah. pizza company that we market for. Okay, okay. And we, they have a line of vegan yeah. pizzas. Yeah. So we have a bunch of audiences that are like okay. people that are vegan yeah. diet, who read vegan publications, who follow mm. other vegan pages mm. online. Yeah. So those are usually people that are already in it. Right, right. So you can target them with, hey, vegans, are you looking to get more out of it? Good. Do you need to understand more about the nutritional elements of it? Perfect. Right. So yeah. there's that segment. Okay. And then you could have like, office people and you can have yeah I mean it's pretty much it's pretty much endless when you okay. when you look at what Facebook has to offer and so. I guess when you do something like that right so if you you change the intro and you're slotting different stuff in mm -hmm. you'd still have to go I guess then in the in the interest section on Facebook or in, mm -hmm. uh, or in the Facebook ads and, and touch and touch that up a little bit yeah um, so one yeah. one misconception that people have about Facebook ads is uh, when you boost a post yeah right I'm on my page and says do you want to boost a post and yeah. then you have different interests yeah that is about one one hundredth of the targeting capabilities of Facebook. Right, right. So Facebook has an entire other ad pro product. Okay. Um, and the way you get that is business.facebook.com. Right. You sign up for the ad account in there. Right. Then you can actually get into everything. Okay. Demographics, yeah. behaviors. Um, you could find women who like sushi and have watched Finding Nemo too. Yeah, like it's yeah, ridiculous exactly. when you get into there. Yeah, so Finding it's, it's demographic. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking... great movie, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there's like demographic yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's behavioral stuff. Yeah. There's, you know, you can get down to like what device the person's on. Yeah. Hey, iPhone user. Yeah. He's sick of being what I, not, not in your case, but yeah. it, gets, it gets that granular yeah, yeah, down there. For sure, so for sure. um, yeah, the ad manager is, is a great spot to play okay. and if you use a product like ClickFunnels yeah. or something else that you can make a multitude of landing pages yeah. they can all go to 
immediately to that audience. Okay. And you basically just duplicate it, adapt yeah. the copy okay. for each single one. Okay, okay. So, hey, vegans, trying to get more out of your diet, and then it comes to this page. Right. Hey, office guy looking to not be so fucking lazy mm-hmm, all day, mm-hmm. here's his landing page. So, uh, with a click funnels yeah. or with lead pages, something yeah. like that, you can basically duplicate them out, okay. change the picture, change okay. the copy to match what you were using in your Facebook ad, and okay. that's, a, that's a sweet spot there. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk about webinars, because you were yeah. thinking about that as a path. Yeah, like, yeah. It, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, when they come, when they're going through the social media, if they're on Instagram or they're on Facebook, they're gonna see my photo with the link to click, they're gonna click that link, it's gonna take them to a page where they can put their email in and pick a date for the webinar, right? Sure. Then they pick a date for the webinar, and then from there I was just gonna show them how to do what they're having problems with, which is building muscle on, on a plant-based diet. You okay. know, and Have you shot that before? Do you already know what that's gonna look like? That's the thing, I haven't actually shot the webinar. I'm trying to research yeah. you know, the best way to shoot the webinar, if I can do it beforehand and then just put it on, to, put it on top, or if I should do it live, or like what my options are. I, from my experience, yeah. the best thing to do it is to do it live a bunch of times. Okay. And then f- there's gonna be that one time. So the first time you do it, you're gonna suck. Yeah. Everybody yeah. fucking sucks the first time. You're gonna be yeah. trying to read the script. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck's going on. yeah. Um, you'll find a sweet spot where you've got like, you know, more people than you've ever had before. You know, now there's like 17 people instead of yeah. five on the webinar. Yeah. And it'll, you'll hit a cadence and you'll get the right questions. Okay. The Q&A is the biggest. Okay. The content you're putting out in a webinar will play okay. and it'll work. But if you get a bunch of questions, a bunch of engaged questions from okay. the people watching and you're able to answer those and they leave with leaving warm and fuzzy, mm-hmm. that's the one you record. Okay. You take that and then you just you okay. mark it to that recorded one. Okay. Okay. So I would say the answer is yes, having a recorded one is a good thing, okay. but making sure it's the sweet spot. Okay. And the best one you're ever gonna get is Q and A. Okay. It's the like the average person, that mm-hmm. person who's gonna ask the, you, so you don't wanna talk down to an mm-hmm. audience. Mm-hmm. That's one thing that'll, you know, mm-hmm. this is how plan works. Yeah, 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 You're yeah, gonna yeah. lose Good people, point. right? But if you get somebody who's new, and mm-hmm. you can even, don't, don't actually do this. <laughs> you could actually have someone yeah. on the webinar that's yeah. asking the dumb questions. Like okay, you plant yeah, yeah, them to ask it. the dumb questions yeah, that you can, yeah. it actually will work really yeah. well. Okay, yeah. um, and the way, the reason for that is, if I've stumbled upon it and I've been thinking about it, if you've said one word that I didn't understand, yeah. that I didn't have the chance to dictionary quickly yeah, enough, yeah. and I feel stupid at any point, yeah. I'm out. Okay, yeah, yeah, good point, good point. And you can only dumb it down so much without talking like the person's an idiot. Right, right. So having a bunch of people to ask stupid questions, yeah. but that would, th- that are common, Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the sweet spot for a webinar. Okay. When you okay. answer those, yeah. that's the one that you save that recording, yeah. and then you just park it out and over and over. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Q and A is the big piece. Okay. Q and A. Okay. So then I guess it, filming it live, getting the Q and A's, just getting the, the responses and stuff, and then you can just obviously replay that. In yeah. Target. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I would do. I would do. Uh, I would try at least like ten to twenty of them live. Okay. I think you'll find a cadence of, of even just answering the questions. Okay. Right. Like you may have not considered how to answer it the mm-hmm. way that someone's asking it. Right. And it's one of those things like, um, how do you say it? Sometimes the way that you inflect your voice mm-hmm. or you add a punctuation somewhere for that one time okay. is the unlock of like, yeah. now that's the way that it needs to be explained. Okay. And you'll find that only by doing it a bunch of times live, okay. where you'll answer a question, they'll be like, okay, cool. Okay. And then on the eighth time, you'll answer the same question in a way and they're just like, oh, but that triggers something else. And you'd be like, that first guy was just too embarrassed to ask a follow-up question. Okay. You'll learn mm-hmm. how your answers are actually being understood. Okay. And once you've done it 20 times, you'll be a master at it. Okay. So I'm thinking, if I'm doing something live, for example, right, when it comes to food and nutrition, what I want to do is show them, like, the actual food, like, have a, a board where I'm, like, writing stuff down mm-hmm. to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just really, so after I'm done the board, I got to have, like, a little section, I'm thinking, in the kitchen where I, like, I pan to the kitchen, I guess, and, and show them the food and stuff. And I'm thinking, um, to do a Q&A with that, it might get kind of clumsy, you know? Like, sure. if I'm looking at it and stuff like that, would you, do you recommend me just keeping it simple and just like, you know, maybe just having a board where I can see my phone and be able to answer it? Or if I'm, if I'm literally just being able to transition to that kitchen scene, go to the board, mm-hmm. and just really make it that kind of like, like you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like know. a school, yeah. Okay. I don't know. I okay. think you gotta. That's why I think Play you gotta it, do right? it. Yeah. Okay. That's why I okay. think you gotta do a bunch of the live ones okay. because you might. What often happens with a webinar, and I've done them in the past, is 
often you want to answer everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and make sure everybody understands everything. Right, right, right. And right. what happens with that is people get lost because you've gone from step one to three to seven to ten to make sure you cover. Okay. And yeah. someone's stuck where you're like, wait, where did two go? Yeah. I'm confused. What? I, where did we, did we miss that? Yeah. Okay. So you'll okay. find based on people's reactions and watching them, yeah. watching the live ones after, yeah. being like, oh, I see, I didn't do a good job of getting this down or that down right. and you might you might be in the kitchen chopping stuff yeah, or yeah, writing yeah. on a board and yeah. you might you that might be distracting from what you're actually trying to do okay and you that might help you hone that content down into you know what it just has to be a which is the intro b which is the science and fundamentals yeah. and then c which is the like here's my super five top five foods or whatever that okay. thing is okay. q a and that might be it okay i got you it could be that simple okay. but i think until you've done it a bunch okay. and you've one thing you'll find watching the recordings after and i find mm-hmm. that uh, and I'm, that's how i'm trying to get better doing these types of shows is mm-hmm. like i'll be explaining something and mm-hmm. then they're like, yeah no problem then i'm watching after i'm like I didn't do a good job. There's no way they knew what I was fucking talking okay, about Okay, got you. So you, you, you get a cadence for that. So you're saying the best way to film a webinar then is probably through your cell phone because then you're going to be able to see, or I guess your laptop when you're on it, so you yeah, can you see can, people talking to you. and be Yeah, you can do them where you've got like the, you can have them live and then yeah. you, um, oftentimes you won't have them live because there's not really good softwares for it yeah. in the way that they're so fast you could have 10 people's right. faces up. Right, right, live right. Live video, it usually ends up slowing it down right, and caching right, it a bunch. Right. So it's usually just you looking at you. Okay, hoping, okay. Hoping that people are yeah. nodding their heads. Yeah, awkward. right, it is. It's yeah, super yeah, awkward yeah, the geez, first couple yeah. of times. That's okay, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, and I, I don't know what the content is. Like, okay. I think, to me, I watched a couple of your videos on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Low carb versus fasting. Yeah. You're looking into the future self thing was kind of strange. I yeah, like interesting. It. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Good, good way to look at it, man. I, I didn't know you checked out my content. Man. Mike Mall's checking it out, man. That's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, but I think yeah. I think there were some good takeaways from that video. Uh, yeah. In that, you explain the science in a simple way. Okay. And so, like, I don't know, for a guy like me, for example, yeah. If you gave me the perfect workout plan and we're like you need to get your heart rate up to 110 beats a minute okay and then you're going to do these exercises until this goes to here or that or you feel that or whatever it is then i'd feel accomplished okay if you were to just tell me do these all in a row okay without that little bit of scientific right. piece now you're in fat burning mode and okay. when you when your body does this it's out of fat burning mode so stop working out if i didn't okay. get that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people who don't understand this type of stuff yeah. are intimidated. I'm super intimidated by it. I don't okay. know nothing about nutrition. Right, right, right. I barely right. know what a fucking yeah. calorie is. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. Like it's bad. <laughs> I gotta so do a YouTube f- video for you, man. I got Please. You. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Uh, yeah. No, but for real, like I, I would break it down in uh, a way that you're talking related to other things. Okay. Give an analogy, even if it's like far out. Okay. Just Compared to something to relatable, okay. because if it's pure science, it's yeah. going to be weird. Okay. But getting people to understand the why okay. is the I think is the unlock to this stuff because okay. the how and the what and the you're going to be this or that. Like, yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. But it doesn't keep people motivated. Right, right. When right. I know the why mm-hmm. and a little bit of the how, mm-hmm. then I know when I'm doing it right. Okay. And I have a benchmark for oh I dropped the ball here. Oh this part was really good and but I know I can get it to here. You know what I mean? Like okay. if I know how high and how low I can go right. and what the benchmark is, if I have that understanding, when I go into something like that, oh, I see that I fucked up, but not so bad that I should quit forever. Right. You know what I mean? Right, makes sense, yeah, you, okay. You gotta... Gotta make it relatable so they can understand where you're mm-hmm. coming from, right? Yeah, okay. people need the info, but they also need, they also need to be, it needs, they need to understand it, like for real, for yeah. real, understand okay. it, so. Okay. However that works, okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know for your content, but I, right, the right. way I was thinking about it was the low calorie versus fasting right. video. Right, right, I right. feel that it, that did a fairly good job. Now okay. it was maybe a bit too technical. Okay, okay. And that, maybe that was the intent for that, yeah, but I think yeah. for the webinar, yeah. I think that level of technical, right. but then being like, that's like this happening this way. Or okay. that, that's the same thing as if you flipped on a banana peel and market or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that will really get people invested. Okay. So I would think about that. Okay, sounds good. How, however that can relate. Okay. Um, and then, yes, yeah, and so it's going to teach people about 
So yeah, take, just finish up the final yeah, webinar. I think, yeah, so I think, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think like just taking that away, like just being able to kind of split, sp like split testing that mm -hmm. I think is probably gonna be my best, my best scenario. Cause I mean, like you were saying before you said that I really was just gonna film it on, you know, a professional camera and just kind of just have it already done and just not do any Q and A's and just kind of just throw it up. Right. So I guess, you know, I'll be able to kind of split test that, do some interest. And I guess, like you said, the main, main thing is just finding out what works mm -hmm. and just kind of going from there. Okay. Yeah. You'll yeah. know with webinars, yeah. there will be there will be one where like it also will convert a bunch of people on that day okay, and you'll be like, yeah. oh, that was sweet. But yeah. you'll feel at the end, yeah. especially if after you've hit that like 15 to 20, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll hit one and you'll be like, oh, that was the one right there. Okay. Because okay. there's, there's just something about the interaction, something about the questions okay. and the second and makes third sense. question that the same person asked. Okay. When that starts happening, it means you're right, you're right in that okay. space. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's almost like you gotta, you gotta work your, your, your funnel side. It's, you're not like broadcasting this everywhere yet. It's more like just the, the, the live webinar and then you just take back that information and then from there, once you have the one that works, then you can yeah. just replay that one. I, as I that. say so. And look, you could film one one time and it will work. Okay. You're a charismatic guy. Yeah. You're used to being in front of a camera. Yeah. There's not yeah. gonna be any issues. Yeah. But I, I, and we're probably talking about a 10 to 15% difference in conversion of that, that one. Right, right, right. Hey. 10, you, 15 percent counts dude, too. When yeah, you, when you hit it, that's a big number. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. When you're yeah. paying for people to come, you know what I mean. Yeah. When you're paying on Facebook for yep. people to see your stuff. Exactly. It, it's a, ten to fifteen percent is big. For sure. But you will get that extra ten to fifteen percent. Okay. Doing okay. That. Awesome. And then okay. so once they get in, they're gonna opt in to what? You're, it, yeah. Walk me through. So so, so the, the idea is once they get in, they're gonna so they're gonna scroll through social media and stuff like that. They're gonna see, you know, I, I wanted to test like a photo and a video and see what is gonna work best to capture people's attention. Um, I know like it, it looks like on Instagram or Facebook, you know, when you have a photo, you can put writing on the photo. Mm -hmm. And then so for example, I can say, hey, um, you know, plant-based, free plant-based muscle training as an example, right? People can say, okay, I want that, click it, and then put their information in the system. And then once they put their inf information in the system, their email and their name, then they're gonna be able to pick a date, you know, either yeah. today, 15 minutes from now. Mm -hmm through there once they pick the date they get a confirmation email then it says hey uh make sure you go and you check out the the video we're going live in 15 minutes yeah. and then they go and they view the webinar right i guess one thing mike that i'm a little confused about too is like should i do like um should it be i know maybe it come back down to testing but is a video going to be better you know where i do like an in your face video that that literally just says hey you know it's the plant-based king this is what i'm going to show you guys how to do let's get it going or should i do as a photo better where it just explains it on the photo so they see it on the photo because I might necessarily be able to put writing on a video and people might flip past it yeah miss it yeah so it's really just platform dependent too okay so a couple of rules um, Facebook and Instagram ads okay when you're whether you're using a video or you're using a picture you can only have words on 20% mm. Mm. and so the way that that works it's not it's not 20% of total coverage, is mm -hmm. if you've got a picture, 1080 by 1080 picture, mm -hmm. imagine it as a 10 by 10 grid. Okay. So there's 100 squares. Okay. If you have text that's touching more than 20 squares, Jeez. then you're out. It won't run. No so, way. But yeah. I, I'm talking like if, if you've got a number two, yeah. and it's like just touching the border yeah. of it, yeah. then it's in that square. It's part of your 20%. Okay. So it has yeah. to be under 20 yeah. to even run. Okay. okay. And then the less text, the better your ad's gonna perform anyway. Because okay. Facebook will limit it even if it's approaching okay. that 20%. Okay. So I would stick to very like headline mm -hmm. in the pictures, if anything. Okay. You gotta remember you also have room for copy. Okay. Right? So you in a Facebook environment you've got your picture, you've got your text above, and then you've got your headline and your call to action below. Right, right. True. Instagram, yeah. you've got it here, you've got basically like one and a half lines of copy because yeah. it's your brand yeah. then the two lines of copy and then everything else is like you got to click more to see it so okay. you got to get them quick yeah um but you'll you'll want to test okay i would say for you mm -hmm. because you're like well spoken and you're handsome mm -hmm. video okay sounds good because okay. i've seen your videos yeah. and it fe like it feels like you could bring people down the path okay okay um now the only challenge with video on from facebook and instagram yeah. ads is um they're cheaper to run, but they don't get the same level of engagement as a picture. Okay. okay. So what that means is um, you'll get more people watching them, Okay. but you won't get as many likes and comments and shares as a picture. Mm, okay. That's just the, generally speaking, that's okay. the nature of it, unless you've got like the right video. Mm -hmm. I think it depends. 
I think when you're talking about an ad mm -hmm. versus something that's being used to build brand and awareness, it's different. Okay. So I would think about having the like, hey, come to my webinar mm -hmm. as like, you should splash it at the top of the funnel. Okay. You should have some people see it. But what I think you really should think about mm -hmm. is that other content. The okay. like, what is that four or five videos that like people are gonna like watch and be like, man, this guy's like really pulled me in. I'm okay. invested in him, I like him. And okay. then going okay. for that. Okay. Cause you can run those as ads yeah. as well. Makes sense, okay. So. I mean, you can't use people's names and stuff, yeah. but like back to Derek, the yeah. 25 year old guy, yeah, yeah. you could be like, yo, Derek, yeah. like tired of getting fed out of yeah. your office chair. Like yeah. Yeah. here, here's, a, here's a, my YouTube channel with five videos that you can use to five minute workout at your desk, okay. whatever okay. that is. Okay. Once you've had them interact, mm -hmm. whether they've liked it or shared it or mm -hmm. clicked it, mm -hmm. you can then put them into a remarketing, okay. which is um, kind of the next stage of the right. funnel. Yeah. Okay. The reason I recommend doing that first, you will get some people that will buy okay. Okay. off the first, hey, this is the webinar, come check right, it out. Right, right. But by putting out content that's not asking for anything right, right. and giving them a complete package of content, right. it doesn't have to be a million videos, right. but it's a five video sequence for the, hey, vegans looking for like the, some recipes, mm -hmm. and it's like five two minute videos. Okay. And hey, Derek at the office looking for a couple workouts at your desk, Makes sense, here's yeah. five videos. I like that, yeah. Then you've given them 10 minutes of stuff that they could never come back to you, and they, they, yeah. but they would like you. Yeah. Because you gave them a complete thing to take away. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of, here's part one of five, mm -hmm. but now put in your credit card. Yeah, yeah. Makes that's sense. What, that's what everybody does. Makes sense. Does. Makes sense. And yeah. that's the, I think that's what limits people to actually getting okay. really, really scalable. Okay. That makes is that sense. They, yeah. they sell, 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 and mm -hmm. it's no brand. It's, you, okay. want, you want to see my branding, you got to pay. Right. Which is can work. Okay. It's not going to be the biggest thing long term. If you want to be right. the king yeah. versus a player, right. that's the answer. To okay. You. Okay. And so I think the the Instagram video or the Facebook video is, hey, stuck at your desk all day. Mm -hmm. Do you want a couple workouts? Da 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 da. Yeah. Pull people in that way. Okay. Right. Okay. You can then so Facebook like or that. Instagram. Yeah. What you could do is say, I want people that watched more than seventy five percent of the video yeah. to now receive this ad. Okay. Okay. So you can you can splice it that way, right? Okay. If yeah. I if it's a two minute video or yeah. a four minute video, yeah. Say it's say it's four minutes, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody watches thirty seconds of it, right. Maybe my next add to them is the other video in the sequence. Okay. Got you. Got you. Okay. If they watch three minutes of the four minutes, right. Okay. There's obviously some intent. This guy spent right. the time. They they you know they right. took this in. Right. They spent the time to take it in. Right. Maybe they get the offer quicker. Okay. Okay. But I think it's a okay. sequence that way. Okay. okay. And again, you should ask, you should have some sales ads at the top of the funnel. Okay. But you should also be driving a l couple layers of content. Right. And maybe that's like, here's a workout video. Mm -hmm. Now here's a, a blog with some recipes for plant-based. Okay. And see what people do with them. Okay. You know, people click and they spend three minutes on the website. Okay. Then sell them on something. Then okay. the next ad is sales. Okay. If they flash onto the website and they go away, right. then maybe they need another video. So you could probably optimize a website so that it shows like, hey, this person's been on here for three, four minutes. You can send them maybe something yeah. that, that, you know, say, hey, if you need more, here's what, what I can offer you kind of thing. 100%. Right? Okay. And so what, and you can do that with the ads. So okay. you can do it um, with Google, so okay. YouTube, or mm -hmm. you can do it with uh, Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So what you do is when you create your ad account, mm -hmm. it gives you, you know, Google Analytics, yeah. the code. Facebook also has a code, it's called a pixel. Okay, yeah. So you can put that in your website and okay. that tracks everything that Google Analytics does. Okay, okay. What you can do is say, I want people who went to this page mm -hmm. and spent more than two minutes and then that audience, yeah. however many people that is, this is the piece of content I want them to see. Got you, got you, got right? you. Okay, got you. So yeah, yeah. it gets like that, yeah. it gets really deep in terms okay. of how many things you're building out, which is why okay. I think if you picked two or three personas okay. that are like the key people, because yeah. within that persona, I think there's probably 30 to 40 pieces of content that you need to make. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. that's going to sound intimidating. Yeah. It always does. Like, it's a lot of like 30, geez, like, what are you doing to me, man? No, it no, makes sense. Whatever, yeah, whatever it takes, man. And yeah. so the way I would think about that is like, um, and I don't know if you, if the messaging would split from male to female. Yeah. I don't know. It might. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, good question. Right. Good question. I think about that. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah. and if that's the case, the intro is, "Hey guys, thinking about da 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 da," mm -hmm. and then that ad is targeted at men. 
Okay. Hey, girls, are you thinking about da 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 da? Right, right. Because they might have different pain points. Okay. They might yeah. have different things that they Good need point. from this. Good point. And so I think it's that, and then it's you know maybe a five workout thing and mm-hmm. three recipes, mm-hmm. right? So there's your there's there's ten pieces for men, ten pieces for there's your twenty there. And where would you put those? Would you have that those sent as like emails to somebody like a follow up email? Like would the, would that content be should be sent through emails or could they just click the link and then it would go and give them that free content somewhere. I, yeah, so I would suggest running it as an app. It depends. Okay. I would test two ways. One is, hey, here's all this content. What I'd like you to do is sign up for the webinar, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the sales pitch. Okay. The other thing you could do is get them to the website sooner than later and say, hey, over the next... 14 days mm-hmm. and I'm going to send you an email every three days. Mm-hmm. It's going to have a workout and a recipe and a workout and a recipe and a workout and a recipe. Gotcha. At the end, I'm going to ask you if you want to come and sign up for this program. Okay. So okay. I think you do it both. Um, mm-hmm. You will get people that won't do either and you're going to have to serve it to them purely on the platform. Okay. So I clicked on the Facebook ad mm-hmm. that goes to the recipe. I've been on the website. Mm-hmm. The next time I'm on Instagram, I get the workout. Mm-hmm. The next time I'm on Instagram, I get the other one. Mm-hmm. Facebook, I get this one. So you'll have to build it out in, in each way. Okay. The nice thing is that the content's all the same. Okay. Like once you've built that once, mm-hmm. it's either in the email sequence. Mm-hmm. So the way I would do that is um, you have audiences on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it's people that have clicked people that have watched a certain amount of time, right. people that went to this page on my website. Right. You can stop a sequence of mm-hmm. ads if somebody opts in. Okay. So what that is, you'd say, if somebody gives me their email on the mm-hmm. website, mm-hmm. that counts as a lead. Okay. So mark it off as a lead. Okay. When that happens, you can say to your sequence, mm-hmm. if they've matched up with being a lead, mm-hmm. don't give them any of this other stuff on Facebook. Okay. Then it okay. go into email. Okay. So that way you're not inundating them with, okay. well, why am I seeing this? You just emailed me that thing okay. I thought I was getting in makes there. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So that, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so I yeah. think what what I'll, what I'll send you is uh, I have a, a, an article I did on like how to build out that funnel. That'd be amazing. Because yeah, I think when you see yeah. that that path yeah. and you understand the triggers to stop yeah. or stop or do this or do that, that'd be amazing. Yeah. then all you have to do is build the content for each Okay. thing and then it becomes very easy okay. you have a roadmap yeah. to the content yeah and I think to me I get like I said is I think it's here's five simple workouts that are attainable mm-hmm. here's three to five recipes that are attainable and then a couple pieces of content that are I'm asking level one I'm asking level two I'm asking level three mm-hmm. so outside of the here's your free stuff that's mm-hmm. really practical mm-hmm. that you could just take this and be happy with it forever right. which right. is where I think you should leave people right. Right. then you've got the asking content Okay. So then there's the, hey, um, you know, I, you just saw all this stuff. I'd love to show you more. Do you want to sign up? Yeah. Maybe okay. they, right? Yeah. Maybe they opt in, maybe they don't. Right. And you should splash that in throughout. Okay. Right? If I'm on workout number three, mm-hmm. they could get a video being like, yo, gotcha. are you ready to do this? Gotcha. No? Okay, cool. Right. We'll yeah. keep giving you content. Got you. Got you. And you can do that by email okay. or on social. Okay, got you. Um, okay. Then the other thing you can do uh, is... And this is the thing that usually helps people push it over the edge, just the remarketing version. So okay. uh, you've engaged with me at a high level. Mm-hmm. You've watched a bunch of my stuff. You've been on the website a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I've asked you for the sale. Mm-hmm. You've ignored it. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. You're mm-hmm. going to get people that do, which is yeah. why you build it out as a funnel. Right. So as they get to the middle of the funnel, they trust you. They've seen some good content. Yeah. Right. You've asked them and they're like, yeah, no, but I'll keep watching your content. Right. If that happens, right. they're still interested. Right. So then you may have a you know, a case study or a testimonial where it's a video or a picture where someone's giving you a great write-up. Jason's been the fucking man. He did all this great stuff. Social proof. Who are the other people that have bought that that you've done right by? Who are the real humans that say good things about you? You telling people that you're great, meh. Other people telling people that you're great, the best. So what I would say is, you know, if they've said no to the initial offering but they're still watching some stuff, then they should see some, see, you know, see what, see what Sal has to say about Jason. Good point. Good and point. I was fucking sitting at my desk all the time. I was such point. a lazy piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm fucking doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm doing you know it, what I mean? it up. Yeah. So okay. a couple of those. Okay. Um, and then I, I'd say like, so that's kind of the ask number two. Okay. And then the ask number three is, so for e-commerce, mm-hmm. for products on the internet, it's mm-hmm. generally like the, okay, we're going to give you a discount because we want you to dip your toes. Mm-hmm. 
discounts may, may or may not be on brand for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a free trial mm -hmm. instead of like a paid, hey, get 30 days free, make sure you love it, right. but only give that to people on the third, you know what I mean, okay. on the third ask to okay. entice them. Mm -hmm. Again, if that's not your style, maybe it's a, a free 20 minute coaching mm -hmm. where you're on FaceTime. Mm -hmm. Hey, you wanna make sure this is right? I wanna make sure this is right for you too. Right. Think about it from like how you would actually purchase something. Right, right. right. If, I, if I was like, sounds great, but I'm intimidated, I don't know. Well, you show me some stuff. Okay, now I'm feeling more comfortable, but who the fuck are you? Yeah. Oh, Sal yeah. said something nice, so that's great. Um, yeah, okay, I'm almost there. Right. If you were to say, yo, I'll FaceTime you for 15 minutes, if yeah. that was your third ad, okay. and it was just you with your phone in your hand, be like, yeah. yo, I'll FaceTime you for 15 minutes, give me your email, yeah. we'll fucking do it, I'll make sure this is the right program for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like scalable. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. man, that person will touch. Yeah, I like that, yeah, right? I like that, yeah. So whatever smooth, that yeah. thing is, so it's either a value proposition or, you know, a discount or something like that okay. to kind of get be like the, okay, we've, we're down this path far enough. Yeah. You're either going to say yes or you're going to say no. Yeah, no, yeah. Right? Because that's kind of like, that hits you about three weeks in. Right. They've watched all the videos. They've been to the site two or three times. Now it's either, right, right, now right. it's either, yeah. thank you for the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. let's fucking do yeah, something. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, that um, sounds good. Yeah. A lot of companies, they'll do remarketing in a really lazy way. Right. If you've ever been on Amazon, yeah. you had a thing in your cart. Yeah. And then everywhere you go is just the fucking yeah, picture of that yeah, thing. Yeah, it's just yeah. lazy. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. It's yeah. lazy, but it's effective in that if I haven't bought it and I'm still thinking about it, mm -hmm. you, I might just get annoyed and be like, oh, for fuck's yeah, sake, you know what? Yeah. I'll finally do it. But if you do it in a way that's, that's uh, to me, is here's an ask based on I've given you all this stuff, now I'm mm -hmm. asking you if you want to join. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's fine. Then you say, other people have joined and they've really liked it and right. that's been great for them and here's their case studies before and after whatever right that's kind of number two and then number three is again either hey give us a try 30 days if you don't love it your money back right. whatever it is mm -hmm. or like literally i will jump on the phone with you and do that thing yeah. that's how you're gonna sequence mm -hmm. that's your funnel and again, you can do that through social media ads. Mm -hmm. You can do that through, give us your email, put them in. Okay. You can do that through, come watch the webinar, however you want to do it, it okay. doesn't matter. Right. I would test them all. Okay. Because again, the content's the same shit. Right. 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 A webinar is just a longer form version of the blog post. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, good point, good point. So, okay. um, yeah, no, I definitely like that approach for sure, mm -hmm. man. I think, uh, I like where you're going with it in terms of like, you know, it, like just giving people that, that content, you know, cause I've been on the other end of it too, you know, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, when you get sold all the time, you don't want to be sold all the time. Like you definitely want, you know, somebody to actually pay attention to what you want. People yeah. care about what they want, you know, yeah. so you got to be able to give it to them without asking from them first. And I, I like where you're going with that for sure. 100%. Um, That's why I do this show. I, yeah, I, I'm telling you, the guy to come to, man, Mike Mall, man, this is the guy, man, for sure. I was thinking too, Mike, uh, like if I'm doing these webinars too, right? Do you have like any any uh, programs in mind that would work, like this off besides ClickFunnels or anything like that? Yeah. Um, oh, what is it called? What I've used saying, lead web, Webinar it? Jam. Webinar Jam for okay. the actual webinars. Okay. I don't. There's no platform that's going to be everything. Okay. That's going to be the website mm -hmm. and the opt-in and the email sequencing and the okay. and the webinar program. Okay. Okay. Um, you're probably going to have to use a combination. Okay. I personally use uh, I personally use Squarespace. Okay. Because you, it's easy enough to make a landing page right. on there. Um, I use Active Campaign okay. for email sequencing. Okay. And then I webinar jam or something okay. like that or Zoom is okay. okay. Zoom's okay. a little pricey, but okay. webinar jam's pretty good. Okay. Uh, it gives you kind of like um, it builds it all into one like sweet spot. Right. Gives people reminders. Okay. Gives people the ability to pay and transact okay. on it right in the platform. Okay. Which is nice. Okay. So I would find I would find a website. Okay. That can handle landing pages mm. and taking in an email. Okay. That would jump it into a, a webinar jam style thing okay. where it would send out a sequence of whatever you need. Okay. Host the webinar. Take payments. I think it's okay. Okay. You're so gonna need two technologies. Though. Okay. So about two. So it's either Squarespace or like the Square, Squarespace or the Active. Um, um, active the, campaign active is, campaign. I just use, I only use that for emails. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect. And then, so really, all you, like you are saying, all you need is, uh, like you said, uh, the webinar jam or Squarespace or something, and then just have people, they can build a landing page on Squarespace. If I have a website, would that, how, do they, how I guess that would be where they click from those places to go back to your website, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Squarespace or webinar jam would be good to use for something like that? I would use, yeah, two of them together. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the Squarespace yeah. would be your, your website okay. with all the landing pages, with all your content. Okay. And then if they opt in, that, con that name goes over to webinar jam. Okay. And then 
sends them reminders and hosts the webinars and does all. Okay, that is that if you don't have a website already, or do you need it? so? You need you would. You need Squarespace and a website, right? No, no, no. Squarespace oh. could do it all. Oh, Sa okay. similar to ClickFunnels. It'd okay. be the same thing, except it's it's a little. To me, it's more straightforward. ClickFunnels is really good if you are selling things in a deep, 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 deep sequence. Okay. Okay. Hey, I'm opting into this. Honestly, the best sales funnels I've ever seen mm -hmm. are a landing page, mm -hmm. and then maybe one other page that's like, thank you, and here's an upsell if you want it. The idea that, and as your first time going through, you're gonna see a lot of videos online where they're like, cool, I've, I've opted into this, then it comes to this page, and you have to scroll mm -hmm. nine pages down mm -hmm. to be like, no, no, I don't want the secondary offer. Right. It's gonna drive people fucking nuts. Yeah, okay, okay. Your best thing is, Here's a landing page based on an ad. Mm -hmm. It looks the same, it speaks to the same thing. Mm -hmm. It signs them up for whatever. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want a bunch of free workouts and a couple of free meal plans or recipes? Mm -hmm. Give us your email, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. And then the email would okay. dump out that sequence. Okay, got I, it. I genuinely don't think you want more than the one page okay. funnel, which is why I think ClickFunnels is overkill. Okay, okay, makes sense, that makes sense. And you can play. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's the old way. Yeah. Okay. Is you know you've got like this sequence to here, and then if you opt in, then it brings you to this other offer, and then it takes you to this other offer, and you can't find the close the pop up button. That yeah. shit drives people nuts. Okay. Yeah. Makes right? sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then if I have the so the, the website, if I already have a website going, right? Do I would I need Squarespace still, or could no. I I could just like I think you could combine adapt it, it probably with Webinar Jam and find a way to make could, it work. I think right? you could adapt it. Okay. Like a lot of. I mean, the key thing to a landing page is mm -hmm. the idea anyway, is that it doesn't have the same navigation per se okay. as a website, okay. because you don't want people to go around. You right. just want them to read the content on the page and okay. do whatever's there or not. Okay. okay. That's the idea of a landing page. Okay. So if you've got a uh, you know WordPress website or wherever it is, yeah. you could use a, an add-on like lead pages, okay. which is like a page that sits over top that does the opt-in. Okay. Um, I, but I think the bottom line is Whatever website that you have now, yeah. you could probably make some landing pages on. I don't yeah. think it, that's what I, I'm thinking too. And yeah. here's the thing: to invest the time and the effort when you don't even know what the mm. messaging is yet, right. I think you're better to just create something simple. Mm. Hey, did you see this ad on Facebook? Mm. I really want to give you this free stuff, and it'll okay. be great. And then, you know, at yeah. the end of the sequence of information, I'm going to ask if you want to sign up. Okay. And then they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no. Okay. I think at this stage, yeah. keeping it simple. Okay. As simple as possible. Okay. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. I, I like that. I mean, even thinking about ClickFunnels, there just seems like there's a lot that goes into it. And you're right. I don't really know exactly where I'm trying to go with it. I have to make sure, like, I test out out to find that out, right? Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Just keep it simple. All right. 100%. That sounds good, man. Um, yeah. Anything yeah. else you want to know? Um, shoot, um, we, so you touched on the retargeting stuff, which was good too, because I was actually going to bring that up, so you yeah. just automatically touched on that, which yeah. is good. Um, shoot, I think there was, I'm trying to think, I feel like there was one more thing and it's just not, it's not coming to me right now. Um, oh, we were talking about, oh, we were talking about Facebook ads. Oh. How much to spend, how to yeah, test. Yeah, 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 stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, so, if you've got audience persona one, mm -hmm. and they've got a sequence of content, mm -hmm. I would run the same picture and the same words mm -hmm. to different interests, behaviors, or demographic mm -hmm. based on how you've mapped it out. Okay. So that's when you're in your ad manager, Facebook ad manager, you'll say, I think it's people that have this job title, mm -hmm. that live in this geography, that are between this age and that age, okay. that have an interest in whatever, these publications or okay. these competitors, whatever it is. Okay. Um, I think split testing your audiences against the message is the key. Okay. Right? I think if you've been in training for a while mm -hmm. and you've acquired customers, you've had this as a business, right. you're not guessing about people's pain points, mm -hmm. what they don't understand, what yeah. they don't know, what they want to Good know point. to yeah. actually sign up for something. So I think you've got the answers to okay. that. Okay. And I think a lot of people go the way of, well, I'm going to split test this color button versus yeah. this button or this picture versus that picture. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you've got good professional good looking photography yeah, and yeah. you're talking about someone's pain points or it's one of your videos that you know people respond well to based on YouTube, based on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, you have the unlock to what the co content should be. Okay. You should split test that one piece okay. with the same words, with the same picture or video okay. against audience version one, audience okay. version two, audience version three. Okay. Um, I would always run Facebook ads or Instagram ads at $5 a day, okay. max. Okay. 
for at least two weeks. Okay. The reason you won't want to, don't want to do more is if it's the wrong audience, mm-hmm. Facebook will spend the money for you anyway. Okay. okay. So what I mean by that is if you have a $20 or $50 or $100 budget a day, yeah, yeah. and it's not the right people that are seeing it, right. you might get 23 out of 24 hours through the day, and right. it's like, ooh, we've spent 11 of your $50. Right, right. And then at the end of the day, Facebook's going to be like, shit, we have an hour to spend the other... Th- 39, you, we gotta right. fucking go. Okay. And right. they'll waste it. Okay. So $5 a day for each ad that you're running okay. to see what the result rate, okay. the response rate is of that. Okay. So if you're running it as a, an ad to get traffic, so a right. traffic ad. What do you if, think the best one is? Traffic, conversion ads? Conversion ads will not work for you okay. yet. Okay. So conversion ads generally work when Facebook has an understanding of who you're going after. Okay. So if you're selling product online right. and they're transacting, they're buying the microphone, right. when you have 100 purchases, right. so the, the conversion, the purchase conversion hits 100 times, Facebook's okay. like, okay, we have a brief understanding of who's buying it okay. and what they're trying to, you know what I mean? And, okay. and then you can use a look-alike audience for them okay. a, to make it as a conversion ad. Okay. I don't think you're ever going to use conversion ads. Okay. Not that you won't get 100 people that say yes. Right. I just think the, their reasons okay. and the diversity of the people are going to be so different, okay. it won't make sense. Okay. The only two types of ads I would run are engagement ads, okay. and I would run traffic ads, Okay. and that's it. Okay. There's a lot of other options. Okay. The most effective things are engagement ads and traffic ads. Okay. What I usually use engagement ads for mm. is to build up the views on videos, okay. to get the likes and the, the, the shares and the comments. Okay. So the trick is this. You create an ad that's traffic ad. So mm-hmm. I want people to go on my website and mm-hmm. take this action. Mm-hmm. I want them on my landing page. I want them to sign up. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you run a traffic ad that says, "Hey Barry, get off your ass at the desk. Yeah. You got to do plants. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Right. You've got the video. It's you talking them up. Okay. And they click to that page. Right. When you've created that ad, mm-hmm. Facebook creates a post. Okay. So it's not a post that's on your page, right. but they create what's called a post. Okay. And you can take that post ID okay. and you can use that other places. Okay. So what happens when you do that is, so I've used, made my traffic ad, right. it gives me an ID, okay. a unique ID, and it's okay. Jason's ad. Right. So I take this ID mm-hmm. and then I run it as an engagement ad. Mm-hmm. So if the engagement ad says, do you want to create a new ad or mm-hmm. do you want to use an existing ad? Okay. You say, I want to use an existing one. Okay. You give it the ID and it grabs that same ad. Ah, uh, okay. So now, when this okay. gets a like, right. this gets a like. Okay, okay. Because it's okay. the same ad. Okay. It's the same post. Okay, okay. So if you run so it. So you can do the same thing. You can run the same thing on the same $5 spend on the same ad. Oh, and okay. if it's video, yeah. right? So if this video gets 2,000 today and this video gets three and this version gets uh, two, got you. all the videos have 7,000. Okay, okay. It, it's cumulative okay. views. So, but, so with a traffic ad, mm-hmm. it doesn't try and get people to like it or comment. It, it's more driven to get people to the website. So it's going to show the ad to people that are more likely to click the action button. Okay. But when you run it as an engagement ad in tandem with right. the traffic ad, right, right. the people that like it and comment on it over here, it shows up over here. Okay, okay. So it builds up the, the, okay. the social proof of it, if you will, right? It okay. builds up how many likes and comments and shares and okay. views. It builds that up. The engagement one builds it up for okay. the traffic one. So I run them in tandem. Okay, that makes sense. And since you're using, since you're using an existing um, ad already, it's going to just take whatever budget's on that and start funneling it to thing is that what you're saying no you, have you would to add you, more you money would, you would add more money oh, okay, but with okay, an okay. engagement ad yeah. you could run it at two dollars a day instead okay. of five okay so you're saying okay yeah. okay and if you're getting especially if it's a video mm-hmm. um two dollars on an engagement ad will get you like a thousand to two thousand views a day okay okay so you could get you know what i mean build up two thousand it might not be the most effective for actually getting people to the website right right but when people are seeing the traffic ad it's going to be like oh there's ten thousand views instead of Right. 2,000 or right. whatever it is, it, it okay. builds up the credibility faster. Okay. Okay. So okay. I would run, always run them in tandem, no matter what. So every traffic ad should have a matching engagement ad. Okay. You should take the post ID, mm-hmm. so the identificator, mm-hmm. run it into the engagement one, Okay. so that everything that happens over here shows up over there. Okay, okay, yeah. got you, okay, okay, I see, okay, I, now I get it. Okay, so the people, the engagement people will see the views and stuff like that, and then want to engage more with it because they see the people that are already running the traffic. And then, and then, the, tra- and then the traffic people that see it are like, ooh, this must yeah. be something important that people okay. are paying attention to. Okay, I see what you're saying. Because okay. you won't get the same engagement from the traffic. Okay, I see what you're saying. So you get the engagement people and the traffic people, they're just, basically it's just validating your post mm-hmm. to, to, the, to your new people, so it's not like running it's, a new post with zero views. Yeah. You're basically building off, the, okay. And it's hacking yeah. a little bit because the yeah. traffic 
traffic is the what you actually want. You yeah. want them to go to the website, right, right, right. but the traffic ad's not going to get likes and comments as much as an engagement one. So you're kind of okay. cheating it a little bit. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, making yeah. it look bigger than it is. Hey, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Good way to put it, man. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever's going to get the win, you know, at the end of the day, you know. So that definitely exactly. that definitely makes sense. And then what yeah. you want to look at from the traffic side is yeah. if your so your result rate yeah. is going to be how many people saw it versus how many people clicked. Okay. You want that to be above one percent. Okay. If it's okay. below one percent, it's underperforming. Okay. If it's two to five percent, it's yeah. crushing. Okay. And then the engagement ad, mm -hmm. if you're running it, you want to get um, a two to four percent is a really good spot for an engagement ad. Okay. Six to ten is like amazing for the engagement. Okay. And what would I be looking at? What? what uh, so when you're in the ad manager, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a um, like when you you can see all the metrics. Okay. There's a thing that's like your chart. Okay. And the first chart that pops up will show you how many people saw it. Okay how many people took action and okay. what the percentage of those people is. Okay. So if if a hundred people saw it yep. and ten people clicked, yep. right? Yeah. Then it's a ten percent result okay. rate. Okay. So if I'm over one percent result rate for traffic okay. and over two percent for engagement, okay. it's a sweet spot. It okay. means the ad is being responded to well. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how long should I wait to, to get that kind of a number? Ten days. Oh, ten days, eh? Yeah, so okay. run it, don't touch it. Don't do okay. anything with it for ten days. Okay. Okay. At five bucks a day. Okay. And then at the end of that Take a look, and you might run audience one, audience two, audience three, okay. and you might, you know, and what happens is if it's a good ad for that audience, right. you're going to pay less for a click. Okay. So you might pay 43 cents over here versus 75 versus a dollar ten. Okay. Okay, this ad won. Okay. Let's make more like this. How do okay. I find more like that? Okay, makes yeah. sense. So you you would know if you're below those metrics and stuff after 10 days, and that's when you would kill the ad if you're not if it's not performing the way that it should and just have to go back to the drawing board yep. and figure something else yep. out. And five bucks a day is the, is the sweet spot, so okay. you're not overspending. You okay. might not be hitting the maximum amount yeah. of people, but you won't be overspending. The only caveat to the $5 a day is mm -hmm. When you're building your targeting, mm -hmm. it'll tell you what your audience size is. Okay. With the audience size, you want that to be under 100,000. Okay. Above 20, but under 100 okay. for now. Okay. You might be able to expand it later, okay. but if you're serving a $5 a day ad to 200,000 people, yeah. it's going to get swallowed up. Okay. Makes so sense under 100,000 is your audience. Okay. So okay. you got to change, you know, add this or take away that to keep the number under 100 okay. For, okay. Your, for your target audience. Okay. Um, and then, and then you can expand it as you expand the budget, but okay. to test, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. Okay, what if somebody quit after five days? Would they, you don't think they're getting the full, the full extent of what the algorithm can do, eh? No. You gotta go 10. You, I mean, you can, you can look at it after five. Okay. I've, I've killed stuff that I, probably too early. It's hard to say. Okay. I've had an ad that was like right on the threshold that like kind of sucked, but I was like, I don't know. I feel yeah. like it's gonna go. Yeah. And after like a month and a half where it was like, Enough. It was good yeah. enough that you could keep it on. Okay. But it okay. wasn't enough that I was excited about okay. it. Okay. Okay. At a month and a half, it yeah. started getting us. It got one sale. Oh, okay. So you're saying, yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, it was like seven sales. Oh shit. And that okay. ad, I ran. I ended up running for 18 months. Dang. And wow. the the return on investment was like 48 times. No way. You never man. know. Cool. You never know. It's, <laughs> and because right, if you're thinking about 100,000 yeah. people, yeah. yeah, you're gonna reach at five dollars a day. You're only gonna reach. Not even 10% of those people. Right. So you've got to give it time to let people see it, right. see who's going to respond to it. Right. But seven to ten days, if it's un, if it's a, if it's a dog, you can just take it in the back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes but, sense. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good, Mike. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. All right, man. This guy's the man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, my guy. Awesome, man. Good awesome. To meet you. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. You too. Pal.